So here's a great question we got. I'm new to learning Touch Designer and I've been working through Python tutorials. One thing I have trouble with is integrating a while loop in Touch Designer. Every time I try to do this, it seems like Touch Designer crashes. Why is that and how do I get around it? Thanks. So this one's an interesting one because while loops are extremely helpful inside of Python. And if you're new to Python, a good way to think about a while loop and a for loop is a for loop you usually do on a set number of things that you already know how many times you want to run it. So for example, you might do for i in range 10. So you want to run this for loop 10 times. Or maybe you have a list with five items in it and you want to do a for loop through those items. Now that's nice for the for loop, but where the while loop really shines is that it allows you to kind of just keep running this loop until a certain condition is met. And then you can proceed and do some other stuff. So you'll see this used in Python vanilla kind of all the time inside of applications, while loop, just waiting for some events to happen, and then you kind of get moving forward. Now, one of the troubles with this is that Python being single threaded at its heart and touch designer kind of at its heart also being single threaded in its implementation of Python means that when you run a while loop, if your while loop it doesn't escape fast enough, you're actually just going to stall touch designer while that's running. And in most cases, in the places we want to use a while loop, if you just use a regular while loop and touch designer, touch designer is going to crash. Now, there's a couple ways that I've gotten around this and made my own version of a while loop in touch designer, which is really useful. So a good example that I can make here is first, I'll go ahead and make a constant chop. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this into a speed chop just so that we have a nice little ramp. And what I'm going to do is create a while loop that checks for the value of this speed chop and then tells us when it crosses a certain point. Now, obviously you could put something like a logic chop after this, but just for this example, I kind of want a number that's changing and when I won't know when it's reached that point that I want it to reach. So a good way that I approach this is usually with two separate scripts. And you could do this with one, but I'll explain why I have two of them. One of them is going to be the essentially our version of a while loop implemented into Touch Designer. And the other one is just going to be the setup and kickoff script. So it's going to set things as we want, and then it's going to go ahead and run the little looping script. Now in this example, we probably don't even need the first script. So this is going to, we'll just call this setup and we'll call this other script, you know, something like checker because it's always going to be checking. So now the way I approach this is, first of all, I go into my script and let's say the condition I have here is that I want to know exactly when my speed chop crosses 10 seconds threshold. So, you know, if you were doing this inside of just regular old Python, you might do something like while, you know, some value is less than 10, basically just keep doing stuff in here. And then when it's finished, we can then say, okay, well, now it's finished. We've gotten past that threshold. Now, if you try and run this in touch designer, obviously not good things happen. So the way we approach this first, what we know is we want to get this variable. We want to get the value out of the speed. So I'll go ahead and say uh, value to check equals op speed one. And I'm just going to grab the first channel. So now I can go ahead and just print this. Let me open up my text port here. And go ahead and run this and we can see 125. Now the trick behind what we're going to do here is really kind of nifty. So instead of making a while loop, what we're going to do is use an if and else statement to do our conditional check. And if the condition fails, I'm actually just going to run the script again one frame in the future. So this is a really easy way to approach it because you could say, okay, well, if my value to check is greater than 10, so we know we've crossed that threshold of 10, I can print here, we did it. And then if we're not over 10, then in my else, what I'm going to do is something really interesting. I'm going to say me dot run which tells the touch designer interpreter 
take this script and actually just run it again, but I'm going to add a delay frames of one. So that way I've essentially created a loop just by running this script until the condition passes, in which case my script is gonna stop running every frame. Now the cool thing about this is you could run it every frame, or if maybe it's something that you don't need to check every frame, maybe you just wanna check every 10 frames, every five frames, very easy to just update this every 10 frames. You could even do one times me dot time dot rate, which will essentially give you one second at the current frame rate. But for this example, I'll just do it at one frame. So now the cool thing about this is I can reset my speed chop here and then run my script. And you're seeing it's printing, it's printing, it's printing. That's because it keeps running itself until this breaks 10. We get, we did it. And now you can see I've essentially created the while loop, checked for my condition. And when it's finished, I've now escaped my while loop all without you know, causing any issues with the touch designer process, without stalling it, without creating any bottlenecks. So it's very easy to use this. Now, obviously checking a speed chop value is not super exciting. So a real common place where I do end up actually using this in real world projects is for movie preloading. So for example, if I make a movie file in, And what I'm going to do is turn off the viewer just so that it doesn't preload the movie automatically every time I load it in. What I can do is go ahead and switch this to a different asset. I'm going to use something big, so maybe cloudy ocean. And now what I'm going to do is just change my script a little bit to check on the status of the movie files preload state. If it is fully pre-read, that means, you know, that's our condition, we did it, our movie is ready to hit play on. And if not, check again in one frame. So if you aren't as super familiar with the Python side of movie file in top, super easy. We can go to the Python help. And we can see it has a lot of members that give you so much useful data points. And you can immediately see one of them is called is fully pre-read, which is gonna be a bool. So that means true or false. And it's gonna be true if the movie file is pre-read all of its frames and ready to play. That means when you hit play, no matter what the resolution, it's going to play without dropping frames related to loading that video. So that's really cool because what we can do is say, okay, well, the value to check is going to be op movie file in one dot is fully pre-read. Now what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm actually gonna move this print statement out of here and I'm gonna put this into the else statement and I'll just say movie not ready yet. And then my condition, I'll say, okay, well the movie is ready. Movie is ready. Now in this case, we don't wanna to check to see if this number is greater than 10 because we know it's gonna be a bool, so true or false. And you can also think about bool as just zero and one. And a really nice thing we can do in Python at shorthand is just say if value to check, which essentially unwraps to say if value to check equals true, print movie is ready. Otherwise, tell me it's not ready and then run that script again. So let's give this a shot now. Let's give it a run. Movie is ready because I loaded it in. So let me switch assets here to something else like maybe calibration and then I'll run my script. Movie is ready. So I'll actually turn off the play button here because it seems to be interfering. Let me switch asset to, what about the field guide? So we'll see movie is not ready. And actually what we forgot to put in here is something that is going to preload the movie. Now this is where our setup script comes into handy because in this case, we don't want the preloading of this movie file to be running every frame. We just kind of want to launch the preload and then start checking. So in this case, it becomes really great for this preloading script to say, okay, well, op movie file in one dot preload. And you can still see here, movie's not preloading, but if I run this, all of a sudden it's ready. 
So this is where the two scripts start to come in handy because what I can do is I can do a little bit of setup inside of my first script and then at the end of it, I can say, okay, well, now that I've done setting this up, now you can actually launch into running my little while loop. So op.checker.run. So now let's go ahead and switch this asset again. Let's go back to cloudy ocean. I'm going to run my first script, which is going to preload the asset and then immediately start checking until it is fully ready. And you can see in this case, because we've got three of these printed out, it means this script has run three times. So that means it took three frames to preload everything needed to play this movie. And then it was ready. And then I could do whatever I want. You know, I could play the movie. I could switch scenes in a bigger project, turn on effects. But this becomes a really handy feature because it's just a very, very, very simple way. So for example, I'll switch assets again and run it. This one's a bit faster, only took one frame to load and then it's ready. So this is a very powerful technique because it applies to so many different places. You know, for example, movie preloading is somewhere I use it a ton. You could use it if you're just checking for values, especially if it's coming from the web and you're kind of not sure when it's going to arrive or when the new data is going to be here or when a certain kind of OSC message coming across the network is going to pass a, a certain threshold. And the nice thing I like about this system versus even in some cases using a logic chop is that things like logic chops always cook. So they're always incurring a slight penalty on the system. Whereas in this case, I'm only incurring the penalty while I'm checking, but before and after it's completely optimized and not taking too much processing power. So I hope this helps because this is really a fundamental way and probably the best way that I found of trying to bring some of that while loop Python magic into touch designer. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.